Toyota Hotel World Tour offers athletes of the world the opportunity to discover the world's most scenic trails. From Hong Kong skyscrapers to Moroccan deserts, high peaks of the Alps and Oceania single tracks, this circuit is a getaway to adventures. Our first stop is California, USA to cover the world's first 100-mile foot race, the Western States Endurance Run. This year again, extreme temperatures led to a large amount of DNFs. We will then head to the Swiss Alps for a completely different setup. At the foothill of the famous Eiger, the atmosphere is way cooler and the course much more mountainous. The Western States 100 is considered as the very first 100 miles foot race in the world. In 1974, the foot race was born after a horse rider whose horse was unable to race covered the 100 mile distance on foot. A wild and hot course running through dry canyons and a few creeks are some of the elements that makes this race legendary. A race every ultra runner has in their bucket list. A true reference in the ultra running world that most of the North American athletes are dreaming of conquering one day. The Canadian runner Rob Crar has been one of the few to win it twice. Uh, Western States, uh, key to winning Western States is, uh, you know, for me was being patient, but that's. Uh, you know, uh, composure, confidence, compete is something, is a mantra I, I really live by when I race ultras. So uh, to me, the race doesn't start until about four miles in. You know, it's usually just a, a pretty solid hike to the top of the first climb. And uh, you certainly don't want to be wasting too much energy early in the race on that first climb. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a long race. Any 100 mile race is a long race. So being patient through the canyons um, and then if you can hit Green Gate feeling relatively good, then you have a good shot at, at running your best race at Western States. Western States holds such a special place in my heart. It was my first 100 mile race in 2013. And it was really the, the race that, that started this whole crazy ride that I've been on the last couple years. Uh, it's, it's old, it's established, it has this incredible history, full of rich characters amazing athletes, uh, the energy uh, at the aid stations, um, the energy surrounding the event. There's so much attention leading into it at the race and following it as well. Uh, the course for me is uh, uh, really suits my strengths, so it's, it's a course that I really enjoy. It's not too technical, it's very runnable, has a little bit of elevation starting out. Um, you know, it's there's a lot of races out there, but Western States really uh, sets itself apart uh, um, with its history and, uh, and competition. I think it's something special for anybody who wins Western States, yeah, there's no doubt about it. It's really the, the Super Bowl of, of ultra running in North America, probably similar to UTMB in Europe. Uh, yeah, it's, it has such a, such a rich history and, and you look at the list of winners and, um, uh, you know, to have your name included on, on the list of winners of Western States is something that uh, I'll cherish for the rest of my life.
You know, I think the heart of Western States for me is Cal Street. It's been one of my strongest sections, but it's also, it's, it's a really intimidating part of the course, because like I said, you can run pretty quickly on it, but you still have about 40 miles to go, depending where you are on Cal Street. It's really hot, you catch glimpses of the river, and the river's almost teasing you, because you know you have a ways to go until you actually cross the river and get into that super cool, refreshing water that, that, that re-energizes you. Um, but that's when, that's when you really appreciate all the training you've done. That's when you have to dig the deepest, be the smartest runner you can be, and work really hard at the same time. Um, it's kind of um, an amalgamation of, of everything that went into it all coming together at once. And uh, it's uh, almost like a very intimidating but exciting at the same time to be, to be racing on Cal Street. I think 2014 was probably the most magical moment of, of running in my life. You know, uh, finishing second to Tim Olson in, in 2013. Probably before I even crossed the finish line, I knew it was my goal to come back the next year and, and win Western States. And you know, it had been a, a long time since I set such an such, um, uh, ambitious and difficult goal for myself. And obviously, it was, uh, there was a lot of attention surrounding the race. It was a difficult year of training. And to have that year in that race come to fruition and step onto that, the, 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 the track at, at Placer High and um, just know everything had come together. Um, it, was, it was like nothing, nothing hard to compare to anything else in my life, the energy. Um, the celebration, not just of myself, but the sacrifices that those closest to me and obviously that Christina made. Uh, it, it's incredible. It's, uh, it, nothing can, can duplicate it in the world. The history of the Western States Endurance Run has gone way past American borders and tempted many athletes. Australian runner with strong track background David Bryan is one of them. Running started from a very young age. Um, as a little tacker I ran what we have in Australia, it's called Little Athletics, it's for, for kids. So I started out at Little Athletics doing track and high jump and shot put, a bit of everything and my physique wasn't suited to the powerful sports, sprinting and throwing, so I, um, I progressed towards the, the run, distance running. Um, yeah, and then I was a track athlete for many years and pursued my goals with that and, and cross country. Um, and that's sort of yeah, where the journey began. When my track days ended, um, I, I had a bit of a break. I didn't, didn't want to run. It was more of a motivational thing. I wanted to focus on work and business and, and so on. And, um, but after a few years of that, I, I, I got the itch again. I, I saw, I, I was filming at um, Ultra Trail Australia and, and I saw what an amazing experience it was. And it motivated me to, to get back in. I just wanted to, to, to try this new sport, which was new in Australia, relatively speaking, to the mass market. You know, trail running wasn't a big thing growing up. Um, but yeah, and no, I discovered it and went, yeah, I want to try this. And since then, I've, I've just loved it, fallen in love with trail running. For me, Western States was a huge surprise. I never thought I would get the opportunity to run it um, and and when the opportunity arose it was you know I thought to myself geez it's, it's probably a year too soon you know I need more time I need to get stronger and fitter but then I thought to myself well how often do you get the opportunity to run Western States you know um, and when the opportunity came up I said well you know now this is my year I'm gonna have to put it out there and 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 you know, it's my first 100 miler. I've only ever run a, you know, a handful of, of 100k races. So it is a, a big test. It's a, a huge unknown. But for me, it, it's, 
it's, you know, it's such an iconic event that I'd love more than anything to be competitive. I'm horrified of the snow. <laughs> no, no, we only, um, I've only ever raced in it, run in it once, and um, it wasn't a good experience, but um, I learned a bit from it, so hopefully, yeah, this time around it's much better. Things are about to get real for David Bryan and the 370 participants who have come pick up their bib number. Stem Ryan Sands, one of the top containers this year, has come to blend in with the crowds. French runner Eric Clavry is getting familiar with this foreign environment. Ça fait de long mois là que que je prépare cette course. Uh, pour moi, c'est vraiment l'objectif de la saison. Donc, uh, puis dans un dans un dans un décor vraiment magnifique. Et puis sur une course qui, bah, je l'espère en tout cas, uh, devrait me convenir. En tout cas, une course relativement roulante par rapport à ce qu'on peut rencontrer en Europe. Uh, avec de la chaleur, j'aime plutôt bien la chaleur. Donc uh, on verra, mais vraiment content d'être ici enfin et à des, le compte à rebours là et grainé à 19h du départ. Euh, voilà. Moi personnellement par rapport à cette course là, je vais faire ma course, je vais pas trop me calquer sur qui que ce soit parce que c'est une course qui est très particulière où voilà euh, à cause de la chaleur euh, ça peut sauter dans tous les sens donc il euh, va falloir vraiment être concentré sur soi-même et euh, sur l'aboutissement de, de ma propre course à moi quoi. Voilà. Between Squaw Valley and Auburn, the point-to-point -point course has a downhill train, yet still delivers proper roller coaster type successions of ups and downs and higher altitude in the early stage of the race. Squaw Valley is very different from the white sandy beaches that California stereotypes suggest. Here, snow-covered summit and ski resorts that hosted the 1960 Olympic Games set the scene for the pre-race briefing and top runners presentations. Before the 5 a.m. start, the photos of the legendary starting line are captured. Meanwhile, the tension rises one notch higher as tough weather conditions have just been forecasted for the day. Matinee, ça annonce chaud. Bonne journée à la western, quoi. Je pense qu'il va falloir revoir les tableaux de marche. Parce qu'il y a beaucoup, beaucoup de neige, beaucoup plus que les autres années. Il y a bien 20 km à faire sous avec euh, pas mal de nevé, donc euh, ouais, il va pas falloir s'exciter, marcher calmement. Pas laisser trop de, de, trop de jus dans les nevés, puis euh, essayer de reprendre un peu le retard sur la fin. Mais ouais, ça va être spécial. Ouais, ça va être spécial ouais. The start is only a few minutes away. until the gunfire finally unleashes the runners under the first lights of the day. Ultra trail running race was, uh, I think it's August uh, 2014. I tried my first one. It was a 50K in Bozeman called Old Gabe 50K. And it was actually against 18-year-old uh, Andrew Miller at the time. So just kind of small world coincidence. Uh, 
and he's actually going back this year to run it again because it's a pretty cool course out there. I like the process of the training, and the just day to day. I like going for bigger, longer runs, trying to go run fast times in the canyon or run up a mountain. Um, the freedom to just go run wherever you want to go run as opposed to doing a strict workout on the track, doing a specific route on the roads, um, something more or less that training's boring. Uh, I really like the process to be able to go out on any trail and go explore and go have fun. In order to run that fast, you have to try and you have to run with a little bit of ignorance and you, you have to be willing to push harder than probably what things might say otherwise to push and um, just challenge what people think can be done. And if you go in with that open-mindedness, I think uh, much faster times are very possible. I think mostly it will be time-based goals and trying to run fast. We still don't know if it's a snow route year or not, so that could change some things time-wise. It might go to a little bit more conservative of a race plan if it is a snow route year, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, I think a lot of it's just feeling it out on the day and not forcing anything because most important is to, to get the win at the end of the day. I'm gonna have to see how recovery and how training goes after Western States before uh, a lot can be said about UTMB. Um, I think if I'm fit and I'm able to prepare well for it. Um, I don't see why I wouldn't be able to uh, put a good foot forward to be the first American winner at UTMB. Jim Wamsley is in a league of his own from the start as he blows up the lead pack that can't keep up with his pace. With more experience under his belt and following a much more conservative strategy, Ryan Sands doesn't try to keep up. David Bryan and Thomas Lorblanchet both take advantage of the shade from the pine trees to cool down. Meanwhile, temperatures are still raising. Some runners have already lost their t-shirt to try and resist such scorching heat. In the pack, female runners seem to manage higher temperature better and fiercely carry on their way amongst the men. The aid stations are always crowded at Western States. Jim Wamsley doesn't stop for long though. The following runners will however take full advantage of them to rehydrate and cool down with ice bags applied directly onto their necks.
runner Andrea Huser even takes the time to sit and change socks. Stephanie Howe seems to be a little more spent at this stage of the race, while Magda Boulay is being taken care of by her crew. It's wonderful. I'm very grateful for the experience to come back again. My goal is to run my race, and if I can run within myself, I'll have the best race that I can possibly have. I think about this race daily. It's never out of my thoughts, and just being back here in this community is, means the world to me. The journey to the finish line still has lots of good and bads to unveil. The dream is to win it. I think the objective is to, to make sure I finish but like first things first. Um, it's a really long way out there. Uh, it's maybe not as like that much elevation out there, but it just gets so hot and it's a very fast and like runnable course. And um, I think you can kind of really get caught out towards the end of the race if, if you if you like get your pacing wrong and you kind of blow up like the last 40 Ks or 40 miles can be a really long way. So I think it's, um, yeah, it's gonna be important to kind of pace correctly out there tomorrow. And it's looking like it's gonna be really warm. So I'm excited. The participants are sometimes exposed under the sun. The ground is hard and dry, and single tracks boiling hot. Jonas Bud is trying to keep things together until the next aid station. Nichols chooses to mix running and walking to save his strength. Every aid station is a blessing for the runners. They pour water over themselves to temporarily cool down their bodies, assisted by experienced volunteers. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. Oh, no, you're right. It, it's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you want no ice, action, yeah. It doesn't suffer so much from the blowing stack. David Bryan seems to be going through a rough patch. Jeff Browning overtakes him and carries on without looking yeah, back. Unlike Brian, Laurent Rocher was looking for a second wind when things turned to worse for him. The most exhausted runners end up laying down on the ground. In the last quarter of the race, Ryan Sands takes over the lead after Jim Wamsley blew up earlier. Throwing up and bonking hard, Wamsley had to drop out of the race. Now in second position, American runner Alex Nichols looks composed and well in control. Mark Hammond completes the provisional podium, followed by Swedish runner Ilov Olsen. David Bryan is still in the race, together with his pacer, as allowed on the last 40 kilometers of the course. In the women's field, Yu Wong took the lead at mile 38, but Kat Bradley was hot on her heels. In third, Magdalena Boulay was a few ways back. 
My objective for tomorrow is uh, to get to that finish line and have a great, you know, positive experience and get on that podium again. It's really exciting to see Western States women's field so competitive. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's taking the competition to the next level, and I'm just really excited to be a part of it. I think it's step, uh, you know, forward in uh, in women's competition in ultra running. I think it, this is just the beginning with Western States. I think it's going to happen in all the other races as well. The runners make it to the famous river crossing, and holding onto a rope to fight the current sounds like a bit of a playtime during their journey through the heat of the canyons. A done deal for Ryan Sands, who's on a mission to the finish line, especially now the sun's come down and the temperatures are finally dropping. After 16 hours and 19 minutes, he crosses the finish line on the Auburn track in first position. He ran 40 minutes slower than in 2014, where he placed second, proof that this year's race conditions were tougher than usual. I think Western States is the, the one race I've really dreamed of winning, and it's uh, taken me quite a few years, a lot of ups and downs. The last time I was here, I got sick the day before the race, so yeah, yesterday was a dream come true to have my whole family here, my mom, uh, my baby, my wife, and some really good good friends, so yeah, I couldn't have asked for a better day. I think because of the, the, the early start part of the race was so slow going, so you had to work really hard, like running through the snow, and a lot of the time you'd fall, and once or twice I thought I nearly removed my kneecap, like it was, it was tricky and I kept falling, um, so I think you used a lot of energy, and then suddenly, as soon as you got through the snow, the temperature just, just went like really, kind of skyrocketed and got really hot. And then it was just like brutal, just a lot of the time, I think it was about survival. Alex Nichols finishes a strong second, showing once again that good race management pays off. Mark Hammond comes in third position and completes the men's podium. Behind, Jeff Browning and Christopher Denucci both cross the finish line with their children. Eric Clavery finishes in 16th place. Je m'étais fait beaucoup de films, mais je m'attendais quand même pas à ça. C'est vrai que c'est très éprouvant malgré le, je dire, le relatif faible dénivelé par rapport aux, aux ultras qu'on peut avoir en Europe. C'est vrai que les conditions étaient particulièrement difficiles parce qu'on avait beaucoup de neige. Euh, les chemins n'ont ben, pas eu le temps d'être entretenus. Mais bon, une, une belle expérience quand même. C'est une belle course. Ben, c'est une course mythique. Donc c'est pour ça d'ailleurs que je l'ai terminé parce que j'étais vraiment mal en point. Just ahead of Clavery, first woman Cat Bradley concludes her journey in 15th place overall. I couldn't be happier. It was, such, it was just such a great experience. I had all of my friends were, or I had an amazing crew who just were so supportive and that. And that makes the experience even better, and so I'm, I'm very happy. When I entered the stadium, it's like, oh my god, I fended off Magda, <laughs> um, the second place woman. We were fighting to the end, and I could not believe it. I thought she was going to catch me, so I was just complete awe in the day and how it went, and it was a really special moment. Magdalena Boulet finishes second, and Sabrina Stanley third. Behind the leaders, the meat packers will take full advantage of the atmosphere and landscapes. They will preserve their bodies in such extreme conditions. The ultimate goal being to cross the finish line under a 30 hours cutoff. Only 128 runners will achieve this goal and despite a 65% DNF rate, the last finisher will receive a major cheering by the crowd.
after long battles against snowfields, heat, and their own demons, come the time for rewards. White smiles don't lie about the satisfaction of self-accomplishment of the participants having completed search challenge. This year again, the edition was an invitation to travel and explore new places. Winners and all finishers show great satisfaction as they come and receive their famous belt buckle. Race director and this year's finisher, Craig Thornley, is sure one of them. Ultra Trail World Tour runners have in mid-July the opportunity to encounter another myth, the Eiger, one of the Alps' highest summit. From the bottom, the o inspiring north face of this giant sets the scene of the Eiger Ultra Trail. The 101 km long course with the 6,700 meters of gain is the 13th stage of the Ultra Trail World Tour. Before the start, all thoughts go to Uli Steck, an alpinism legend who's passed away only a few weeks before in the Himalayas. Native of the area, he was registered on one of the races and we had met him. Sur le trail running, tu dois vraiment aller aux limites physiquement. Sur l'alpinisme, tu vas jamais aux limites physiquement parce que tu besoin toujours du marche pour la sécurité. Et Et ici, ouais, tu, 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 tu vas aller trop vite, tu vas aller trop loin, tu dois arrêter la course. Et en montagne, que tu vas aller trop loin, tu es mort. Ça, c'est la différence. Julius, il était notre event ambassadeur. From the beginning on, il a brought many ideas, il a aidé nous beaucoup. Et maintenant, nous perdons notre ambassadeur et notre ami. Et c'était pour nous et pour les relatives, surtout pour moi, très. Tragic moment, yeah. I just was uh, up on Schilthorn. I did a ski touring training, and then I heard from a mountain guide the, up there, uh, Uli Steck. He, he wrote the newsletter, Uli Steck is dying, and I was very uh, shocked. I think he he all he didn't do uh, too much risk. He always thinking a lot, and it was quite a shock, yeah. The Jaeger will keep an emotional memory of Uli Steck, who had managed so many extreme ascents up this mountain he had made his own. Let's dive into it and pull all eyes on one of the elite athletes of the 2017 edition. Thomas Evans broke through at the Marathon des Sables. I have always run, but it's really only been in the last, uh, in the last couple of months where it's been serious and I've been following a running training program. I remember years ago, I went to, went to a friend's house, uh, had, a, had a nice barbecue that evening, went to bed, woke up in the morning, and I went on a run, and then came back in and everyone was watching the James Cracknell Marathon de Sable documentary. I remember seeing it then, thinking, wow, I've never heard of this, this looks amazing. Definitely on my bucket list of something to do in the future. I then signed up to the race um, a year before the race started, so in April 2016, as soon as uh, 2016 edition, the 31st edition of Madden de Saab. Well, being in the military has really helped my mindset uh, and my attitude when approaching these races, as a lot of times you've got to dig really deep and sort of find that inner strength to continue going, which throughout my military training uh, and my military career, uh, I've really been able to hone on those skills. So when things do get hard, you're able to just get your head down and crack on and to give, give all you can give uh, at every stage in your career, uh, but then also during the race. So I wake up every morning um, and my Marathon de Sable trophy sort of sits on my desk just in front of my bed. Um, as I've looked at it every morning and still can't believe that it's, that it's true. Uh, and I suppose the longer, that, the longer that it goes on, sort of the, the more real it's going to become. 
And then the more races I do, the more real it become. But it was, I think the 32nd edition of Madden Saab will always be, it was my first race, uh, it was my first desert race, my first multi-stage race, uh, my first real ultra marathon. Um, and I will remember, remember that race uh, for the rest of my life. I've always wanted to be an elite sportsman, um, and now it's it is really turning into reality. Where I'm in the process now of becoming a full-time ultra runner, which for me is incredibly exciting. It's a little bit scary. There's a lot of risk, but for me, if I want to do something properly, I have to fully commit. I feel like I've got a lot to give. Uh, I'm incredibly dedicated to this sport, and uh, I've got an amazing support team behind me who are really willing me on on this journey uh, and I hope that I can make the journey as enjoyable for them uh, as they're going to make it for me. From the hot sandy desert dunes to the snow-covered faces of the Eiger, the change of scene is brutal for Thomas Evans. He's going into his first mountain ultra with excitement and a dose of apprehension. Alongside the 500 other participants of this 100K, Thomas Evans will follow the usual protocol. It includes bib number pickup and meet up with the other top athletes of the race. I'm okay. And you? Same training, you know, like this week I'm doing 51 in uh, Eager, and I don't know who put the idea that I'm running 100 because it's never been a case yet. Uh, because next week I'm racing in Gross Glockner together with Paul Capel, we're doing relay race there. So He'll run a little bit longer, like 60k, and I'll run 50k yeah, in the team. And after that week, we're going to the Diego Pazzo race in the Montreux, and I'm racing 60. So, you know, if I do tomorrow 100, so I'll be dead for the next two weeks, and I can not race in Austria or in, uh, back in Switzerland. So, so, yeah, it's a big block, you know, for, for UTMB, so I don't expect a good results here or in other races, but, uh, like, I'll try for sure, we will do my best in the races. But it's just uh, training, and I'm just my, switching my mind, you know, not to blow up myself uh, at the beginning, you know, and don't run too fast, and don't look at it even at the race, you know, just to look at uh, more like a training. And this is why today I'm going for three hours run, just to be tired tomorrow, you know, and mimic a little bit conditions of UTMB. With all the big names towing the line, Thomas Evans supporters will expect him to perform well as they support him on the course. For us, c'est was a guy very gentil, very fort. And at the same time, en tant que Marocain, I like the people who are very fort and who are gentil. So, it's a man with a big heart and humble. And I think he has a lot of things to do in the future on the sportif. Moi, j'habite sur 1600 mètres. J'ai pas fait des, des entraînements à 100% pour l'Aiga Trail, mais donc j'ai fait des, des entraînements des dénivelés pour être pour être prêt au minimum pour l'événement. Le, It's almost 4:30 a.m. in the town of Grindenbau. Soon, the 500 participants will be released from the starting area. Back is off for 101 km, 87 of which are on trails and 14 on asphalt. The cutoff time is 26 hours to complete the whole course.
was very uh, tired after Western State. About one week, I, I, I did no things. I hadn't any uh, motivation to do something. But after, I started to train with mountain bike. And uh, last week, I had some good trainings and I uh, did a short race for the last fast training. And now I'm feeling good. Yeah. <laughs> With the first rays of light, the runners break through the high altitude clouds. The majestic peaks of the Bern region draw a unique skyline setting the scene for the participants as they cruise through the trails. Swiss landscapes are legendary and sure delivered with amazing colors. The famous ring of the Swiss bells welcomed the participants at the aid stations. A much appreciated source of motivation happily received by all runners, including Andrea Huser, who's currently in the lead of the women's race. Thomas Evans is learning fast. He's staying within distance of the top three runners and ahead of Italian runner Fulvio Dapit. His Moroccan friend Samir Agda also experiences the European mountains for the first time. So um, the original plan was to run Lavaredo. Um, Lavaredo for me is it's just one of the most beautiful races. You know, the, everything about the race is amazing, and also the competition every year seems to be getting stronger and stronger. So it's it's a race that I always want to put on the you know the race calendar. Um, and so then yeah, when I was um, up at uh, Refugio Oronzo um, in Lavaredo and having some problems with my stomach and realizing you know the race wasn't going to to finish how I wanted it to um, I decided to, to finish it 48k um, and then after about a week or so um, yeah, decided to, to see if I could maybe run the Eiger um, which is funny because I was in Grindelwald a few years ago um, and looking around and, you know said, said to my wife that you know it would be beautiful to run a race here and so now you know here we are um, running the, the Eiger Ultra Trail on, on Saturday so yeah, it's, it's exciting. The course undulates near glaciers, creating a very mineral environment that runners can witness as they run past it. Through the villages, runners receive a warm welcome by the locals before they can reach the finish line. This year's winner, 31 years old German runner Stefan Hugenschmidt, crosses the line in 11 hours and one minute. I felt very, very good from the beginning and I could push hard all, all, the, all the way through. 
it's it's not usual to to have such a good feeling and i could really enjoy the race the, the race started very competitive but then i could go in front and and do do my race yeah in second position swiss runner urs jenser finishes 14 minutes back Jordi Gamito rounds up the men's podium. Thomas Evans confirms his talent, falling short of the podium but ahead of Daniel Young and Scott Hawker. Andrea Huser collects one more win on the Ultra Trail World Tour as she crosses the finish line in the lead of the women's field. Yeah, now it was time to win one race. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I felt good. Just on the, at the beginning, I was a little bit softer, but that's for me. I, I know that uh, first I first I was thinking I, I'm not recovered from this state, but I think after Burglauen I felt very good, and uh, yeah. I, I'm very happy with the race. Second place finisher is Austrian runner Martina Trimmel, just ahead of Helen Urgil. Familiar with Ultra Trail World Tour races, Mary McNathan takes fifth place. Alone or together with their supporters, the participants cross a very welcoming finish line. The Swiss mountains have offered their most beautiful assets for this edition of the Eiger Ultra Trail. Perfect weather conditions allowed to fully enjoy the high altitude trails. For the top runners, this was the final test before their biggest challenge. The most thought after race of the Ultra Trail World Tour is coming next, the UTMB. The date is now set in Chamonix. In 15 years' time, the alpinism world's capital city has also become a reference in the trail running community. Such depth in the elite field has never been seen before. An extraordinary race is to be expected, where could be decided the final ranking of the 2017 Ultra Trail World Tour.